Welcome to episode number 255, where I'm speaking with Dr. Sujata Kakada about the Ayurvedic approach to weight loss. We talk about the causative factors of weight gain, weight gain during menopause, the importance of diet and lifestyle practices for each dosha type to prevent weight gain. And Dr. Sujata also talks about the emotional component of weight gain. So please stay tuned. Welcome to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. I'm your host, Colette, and I hope to educate and empower you to take charge of your health and well-being, preventing disease in the body and mind so that you can thrive in life. I will be sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, which is the ancient healing tradition from India. Now, if you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend listening to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. And if you like the content, please be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast so the new episodes will automatically download for you. Also, you may want to check out my private elements community, which is away from social media. It's a safe space for like-minded people to come together, to connect, to share, to support each other, and to continue the conversation from the podcast episodes. Check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and just click on the community tab and I hope to connect with you there. Thanks for listening and now here is a new episode. Hello and welcome back to the Elements of Ayurveda podcast. Today I'm very happy to welcome back Dr. Sujata Kakada, who is the lead Ayurvedic physician and co-founder of Amir Tassidi Ayurvedic Clinic in Bali. Dr. Sujata completed her Ayurvedic degree in India before relocating to Bali in 2004. She's passionate about teaching and sharing the wisdom of Ayurveda. And she also offers mentorship programs at Amirta City Ayurvedic Clinic. And that is what I had the fortune of doing when I came to Amirta City back in 2014. Dr. Sujata was my doctor during my Panchakarma and mentor when I arrived there. And I talk all about this adventure in podcast episode number five called Ayurveda and Healing in Bali. And that was the start of my journey with Ayurveda, Dr. Sujata. You've played a pivotal role in my life, personally and professionally. It's great to have you back. Thank you, Colette. It's so nice to connect again. Um, It's been a while. Thank you for inviting me. It has been a while. So today we're going to discuss the Ayurvedic approach to weight loss. And I'm really interested in getting into this conversation. You know, the weight loss industry is a huge one, right, in the West. And there's so many diets and potions and and pills and everything. So I think Ayurveda can really offer some great clarity on this subject. Right, Dr. Sujata? Very much so. And particularly post-COVID, this is one of the hardest topics. Like, you know, people who used to be trim and thin thin and very active, um, you know, there's a lot being happening in their lives into their body. And um, it's a a lot sought out uh, help. Um, And I'm hoping to bring some clarity, simplicity into this topic and to make a difference to people who probably sitting there and thinking, you know, where to go, what to do. Great. Yes, this is great. And a great point that COVID had a big impact on people's health and well-being as well. Now, Dr. Sujata, I feel like it's really important to start this conversation on weight loss with the understanding that we must respect our unique constitutions, right? Our our natural body type in that each of the doshas of vata, pitta and kapha have certain physical traits and the unique ratio of the doshas in our own constitution will determine our natural body shape and our general weight composition. Can you talk a little bit about this understanding from Ayurveda and the importance of respecting our natural body weight or body shape? Absolutely. Um, This is really important because, you know, a a balanced weight is different for a vata constitution, a pitta constitution and a kapha constitution. Mm -hmm. If a kapha constitution person is trying to lose weight and get a body frame or the weight for the particular height of the person like a vata, 
then you're trying pushing too hard on your system and its physiology and the mental state and trying to push yourself to become a vata constitution and if a kapha tries to lose weight and have the the body weight and the fat composition or the muscle composition like a vata individual then you're pushing yourself into becoming a vata imbalance Mm-hmm. so then you lose weight but you're going to get all the bonuses of imbalanced vata so that would look like where you lose the kapha's groundedness stability tolerance patience but you might feel very agitated too sensitive uh, not grounded not resilient sleeplessness you know which is a blessing for a kapha constitution generally the blessed with sleeping that means mm-hmm. whatever probably going on in their life they can just hit the pillow and have a good night's sleep but this is something would start happening when you push yourself too much not knowing what's ideal body weight for you the composition for you and what feels right and not just looking your weight in the scale or how you look and you're comparing yourself to a friend or a a ideal or a model that has got a vata constitution so this is really important so let me talk a little bit about it um okay. a vata constitution generally have the lean body so this is a constitution where you see um like a you know bony parts are quite prominent you have a prominent joints you can see your veins under your skin um ribs are very prominent you don't have such a a fuller bust or breast and uh, not so much uh, um, uh, accumulated bulkiness around your um, buttocks or abdomen so generally you have a like a bold like skinny um features and we generally call like a rectangular shape there's lack of curviness so that's normally vata um and for them generally you know a healthy state they can eat anything they don't gain weight and when a vata constitution person start to gain weight due to various reasons which we will talk later they tend to gain weight in the certain part of the body in either it could be just in the uh, mid section um it's not any evenly accumulated weight um certain part belly like a little bit of a pot belly they might uh, feel uh, upper thighs uh maybe a little bit in the shoulder area but the rest of the body feels like arms and legs are skinny like we call like a chopstick kind of uh, feature but they have a accumulation of uh, fat in the mid section this is typically happens with the vata um um constitution uh, when they gain weight um and um for a pitta if you talk about they generally body frame we call medium body frame so they're quite muscular um they have a medium body frame generally we describe as a v shaped body that means narrower waist and broader shoulders uh, evenly distributed fat generally so they are not as skinny as vata constitution you can see um bony prominences but joints are moderately you know uh connective tissues embedding with it um and muscular can have a defined muscles and all those things and when they exercise the body shapes muscles get shaped very quickly so this is a uh, pitta body and moderate body weight they are slightly little bit um for the height of a vata and height of a pitta pitta would have a, you know 3 4 kilos more than a vata constitution of the same height and a kapha constitution which is considered to be a voluptuous curvy body and uh, as we know kapha has got a lot of uh, the element hence they have a bigger bust you know bigger buttocks uh, curvy shaped and um, fullerness there is like a um, their bo- muscles are much more bulkier fuller they have a complete fuller joints you don't see any kind of much of a bony prominence the skin is nicely supple uh, thicker skin you hardly see any veins underneath um and uh, even though they have a stronger bulkier body they're quite flexible because a lot of lubrications easily formed in their joints so and hence um they're a perfect normal healthy body weight which compared to a vata could look a bit different but for a kapha this having these a curvature um bit of a juiciness is healthy and that's what makes the kapha constitution the grounded stable 
resilient, steady flow of energy. Because without having this physical nature, you you won't get that the this good part of the kapha constitution. And uh, they also have heavier bones and um, heaviness is like a on the scale a kapha's healthy weight when you compare it to a vata could look more, but in the physical body wise, the body shape wise, there's no like a hanging loose fat, but it's just firm, compact, full, you know, composed. That's a, a kapha's body by nature. And that's what also gives them the stability and the groundedness, which is which is which is something lacking in water constitution. Um, so this is how one need to understand if you're predominant with vata or pitta or kapha, or when you are a dual doshik, certain part of the body you may have certain um, uh, way of physical structure. For example, if you take somebody who has got a both vata and kapha, uh, you may feel that your lower part, like hip down, you're very skinny, but you might feel the hip above you're a little bit more bulkier. So this is a normal tendency to see vata predominates below your navel and kapha is more in the chest and upper part of the body. Um, and if you are a vata pitta, most likely to have a prominent joint, but if you exercise, you can build up good muscles. This is what you would see. And pitta kapha, because both they have water element predominant, so you would have this... Um, bulkier rounded curvy body but as soon as you exercise you might see that you can lose weight and when you become stagnant you you feel that you're going to gain weight quickly so losing and gaining weight which is something two three kilos can happen you know within a week time if you're a pitta kapha constitution fantastic that was great thank you for going into each of the dosha types the body types and explaining also where the body type tends to carry weight and the dual doshas as well really important and i think it's also very empowering to know this uh, so that you're not striving for a body type that's just unrealistic and i really wish we knew this at a young age so that you know those young people are not striving for a different body type but more assured and comfortable in their in their body that uh, they are given so thank you sujata that's wonderful uh, so moving on to the next question i want to ask you of course there's lots of reasons for weight gain in the body and and particularly the specific doshas involved. Can you talk to us a little bit about this? I know it's a massive subject, but maybe talk about uh, what doshas are, can be involved in weight gain and how that may manifest in the body. Mm -hmm. um, in the nutshell, like a generally understanding, speaking in a common man's language, um, the three or three or four main causes that I see for the weight gain is um, definitely one, it's sedentary lifestyle and a wrong diet. Um, so rather than saying a bad diet, I say a wrong diet because every constitution has a different priority or how the body responds to the diet. Mm -hmm. Other one is inflammation. Inflammation plays a huge role in that what you gain weight or you lose weight or you maintain a healthy weight. Um, and the third one is hormonal imbalance. Um, that's regardless what of whatever constitution you are, like a, a hormonal imbalance can impact gaining weight, unwanted excess and where you don't want them to be. So these are the um, um, three to four causes that I see um, um, plays a big role. So one is sedentary lifestyle and uh, uh, wrong diet, uh, inflammation and um, uh, problems with um, hormonal imbalance. Specific dosha wise, um, on, the, um, on the surface, the important dosha that plays a big role is kapha. Mm -hmm. So no matter whatever you, your constitution is, um, kapha predominance takes place when you gain weight. Right, exactly. And so kapha has that tendency being the earth and water elements. It's the energy of construction and building of tissues in the body, right? So yes. kapha causes that weight gain by building excess tissues. Correct. When it is in an imbalanced state. So it, it that doesn't mean that as soon as like a kapha constitution in itself is obese or overweight, but when Kapha functions abnormally or more than what it needed for to carry a healthy physiology, then it can affect a vata constitution, pitta constitution, and kapha. Since 
you if you're a kapha constitution you already have enough kapha for your physiology it's easy to have excess of kapha and fall into the category of gain weight mm okay i do want to talk about each of those points you made and another one i want to talk about before we go into each one of those is that you know i often find that when people are focusing on weight loss they're looking at diet and exercise um however stress is r- rarely taken into account and particularly in our modern society there's lots of stress uh lots of pressure on each of us and we're always on and very active uh lots of distractions how does stress play a role in weight gain mm um it's a very interesting and a bit sounds a bit um um uh tricky here because Uh, sometimes you can see people lose weight when they are stressed mm-hmm. um right so mm-hmm. stress plays it can be in go in both the direction that's true um primarily stress um increases vata so the 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 first response your body sees in a doshic way is your vata gets increased mm-hmm. and um, when vata gets increased the stress from the vata can cause in either losing appetite or you can have strong cravings or sped up metabolism and hence you start to lose weight both the way either you don't you, you lose your appetite you don't eat and then you can lose weight or you can sped up your metabolism and then you stress you're not eating then also you can lose weight but what happens is stress after a while it releases lots of cortisol like you start with adrenals like a attack fight and survival mode and you know you're constantly burning a lot of calories and to to after too long period of the time body gets exhausted and the result of the cortisol which follows the um adrenal release then try to create inflammation so it's just um, you know brings more water more fluid swelling more circulation and but that re- relates to the body as it need to protect and have a shield and um, that becomes an inflammatory reaction when this inflammatory reaction takes place then comes the cascade of other effects on affecting your metabolism by bringing in the hormonal imbalance and then you know then it purely becomes a kapha imbalance started as a vata imbalance from the stress and then creating inflammation then uh, troubling your hormone system uh, interfering the metabolism so body's ability to uh, use the nutrition turn into repairing healing recycling in cells all those things doesn't happen rather it goes into storage more because it's facing a crisis Okay, very good. And I think we've hit on a lot of the causes as you answer that stress leading to a release of the stress hormone cortisol causing inflammation and then resulting in a hormonal imbalance. Absolutely. And so, while we're talking about hormonal imbalance, uh we see this a lot of weight gain and I get a lot of questions on this during menopause. And um, particularly weight gain around the midsection during ben- mm-hmm. menopause. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that is related to hormonal imbalances? There's a little bit of truth into it. Um gaining like say a woman before she start mer- perimenopause and um, during the perimenopause gaining let's say 2 3 kilos around that time and entering into the state of menopause it's normal and from my own personal observation and understanding body and doshas and working with thousands of people this is needed because um see when the menopause happens your estrogen reduces and estrogen is considered as a juicy hormone in the body it creates a juice it it attracts water um it supports the collagen so there is a a juiciness that what you see in the skin comes from that and um when the menopause hits the amount of um estrogen needed for your physiology um reduces and we also don't need that much of estrogen because we are not in a um highly fertile state but whatever need to carry on the physiology into the different stage of our women's life we have plenty of that more than enough if we have taken care of our body properly before we hit the perimenopause stage so this 2 3 kilos is needed because um 
menopause is a state of vata increase and vata no matter whatever your constitution is your vata is going to start playing up because that's when we start seeing the degeneration losing elasticity of skin you know you know joints start to click and crack so naturally vata it's just uh, how the nature is meant and in order to compensate that like having this extra 2 kilos of lubrication and fat it's it's actually a compensation mechanism stabil- stabilizing mechanism it's a buffering mechanism that's a little bit needed so that it helps the skin to skin to not to wrinkle or become saggy or dry so this is quite normal we need to have that but more than that women drastically gains you know over 5 kilos or 10 kilos that's abnormal that indicates that your your metabolism is slowing down and you're not following the routine and the lifestyle adapting to the changes that your body going through as you go through the changes you need to change your activity your lifestyle and the food um as body going to the degeneration and depletion you don't need so much of um heavy protein or too little or too much of carbohydrates and all those things you want to recalibrate your nutrition intake and time of intake um uh, activities all those things matter so that's why during the menopause this plus 2 3 kilos i would consider that as an a healthy gain of weight so that's you need to compensate uh the, the dryness that creeps in reduce estrogen that we need for the lubrication and stuff uh but more than that is something is telling you that your lifestyle diet you're not adapting as your body changes thank you so much for that dr sujata that's such a sensible uh, such a sensible way of looking at it that our body needs that 2 to 3 kilo increase that small gain just to help as a buffer as you said and i really appreciate that that you know it's it's accepting that as part of this transition to help us as we transition from the pitta stage of life into the vata stage of life beautiful i love that will put i think a lot of people's minds at ease knowing that this is part of the process and these extra couple of kilos are actually helping me and going to benefit me in this process taking a moment out here to bring you a message from our sponsor Mount Madonna Institute the mission of Mount Madonna Institute is to educate and empower future health professionals their level 1 ayurvedic health counselor program is the perfect entry into professional ayurvedic training and it is the gateway to becoming an ayurvedic yoga therapist The health counselor training focuses on preventative and mind body healthcare. Classes are held in person and online. This program starts January 2023 and you can receive $100 off this program if you register before November 30th using the discount code elements22. See the show notes or visit mountmadonnainstitute.org for further details. You talk there about lifestyle and as you mentioned earlier the wrong diet. So let's talk about that right now. Um you talked about about a sedentary lifestyle as one of the causes and the wrong diet and I think that's important too which you touched on just there talking about menopause is adapting to the diet to your stage of life to seasons and so on. Can you talk a little bit about that the importance of diet and lifestyle please? Mhm. Um in general speaking as you know people who are listening here who have heard about ayurveda and uh, you might already have a bit of understanding of okay what it means to be having a vata constitution pitta constitution or kapha constitution how does it affect my metabolism what kind of food helps to balance this each dosha so um over the border if you're trying to lose weight um no matter what okay kapha predominance is there and um the understanding of uh your dosha before you gain weight in order to maintain your body weight a vata constitution um activity wise let's talk about the uh, sedentary lifestyle and vata is always busy they kind of constantly moving they spend energy when sit down because their body parts constantly move even though they are sitting down and doing um a, a um a station work so they spend energy quite quick and fast so storage is their problem 
But um, after a chronic vata increase, you know, affecting the hormones and metabolism, they may start gaining weight. So when when these things start to happen, they really need to immediately look into uh, reducing the inflammation, which is a result of um, um, excessive stress and um, cortisol release. So for them, the wholesome food and the routine is very important here for them. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to do too much of exercise you probably want to learn to exercise in a very mindful way and um, with connecting to your breath more rhythmic not running jogging spin classes all those things they further going to increase your vata where you're trying to lose weight so the more in yoga maybe a bit of a hatha yoga connecting to breath and having a routine how you start your day uh, taking, getting a regular massage, uh, eating food, which is rich in bioflavonoids, freshness, a lot of vegetables cooked, and maybe it just slightly steamed. Um, this way you can help yourself to lose weight if you're a vata constitution. Pitta constitution here, the inflammation rate is quite high. Your liver and blood is, um, uh, hampered. So you want to do strong alkalization, purifying the liver, taking bitter herbs to, uh, cool down the pitta in the blood and enhance the liver function, uh, helping the liver to not to do too, too much of storage of glucose or sugar, but allowing it to circulate and allow your body tissues to use by reducing the swelling from the inflammation here a pitta can do here a lot of raw um, food uh, a lot of uh, juicing uh, eating salads uh, reducing intake of animal protein uh, reducing intake of white carbs and all those things but still incorporating whole grains and stuff going a lot of vegetarian diet raw food diet is beneficial if you're a pitta and you have gained um, uh, weight and you see a lot of pitta symptoms in it um, a kapha constitution if you gained weight then for you you need to go pure kapha um, hara or a reducing kapha lekana langana kind of treatments uh, hardcore exercises needed uh, reducing rich food dairy weed carbs all those things you really need to pay um, um, attention to a uh, lot of exercise uh, not eating late um, all those things plays a big role in um, diet and lifestyle was he here i you know you need to make a friend with the vata constitution who love to do a lot of adventure and activities and stuff spend time with the vata constitution that will help you to reduce your kapha and bring a bit more of a vata attention to your body so that it can break the stagnation and start moving energy moving the um the accumulated fat and turning that into energy and to make you more enthusiastic active inspired motivated great great and in summary maybe you could say that the vata dosha needs to if the vata is aggravated reducing stress to lose weight same for pitta reducing intensity and stress to lose weight and then kapha can increase a little bit of stress yes. or stimulation to lose yes, weight, right? stimulation, activity, stimulation. push yourself a little bit more. Yes, get a little bit of a sweat on. That's okay for yes. Katha. Okay, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you for that. Great rundown there. And so can you tell us a little bit about how you work with a rogi on weight loss? Um, mm-hmm. Or if you have, you know, a case study or something like that, The in particular, like the info that you re- acquire during a consultation, um, of course, the eating regime and the treatments will be tailored. But if you could tell us a little, give us a little insight into how you would approach a weight loss program for a client. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the first thing what I do is um, in, in treating any health condition, I want to know what caused the weight gain in this person. Mm-hmm. What, where is the root? What happened? What happened? I take a long history to understand the person's lifestyle, stress, what's been going on, her her personal life, work life, family life. So it gives me an understanding of, okay, what is the causative factor? Because I read always says before you start any treatment, you want to understand what is the cause. Mm -hmm. The first step is to nipping the cause off because you want Mm -hmm. to arrest the cause. People, when they come to me, you know, I can do various different kind of treatments, medicines, guide them. But I want them to go home and maintain this. So I want to know what is a causative factor Mm. and bringing the insight, bringing the awareness on that. And when they go home, 
they can change all those things so they can sustain what they have achieved working with me when they come to Amrita City. That's that's very important for me. Yeah. So understand the cause and then, you know, we remove all the causes, which naturally happens in the environment when they come to me because all those things going on doesn't happen. They're in a safe, cared, nurtured, all the food and things are prepared for them. So um, knowing the cause, then guiding them what they can do to repeating the same problem when they go home. And then then the line of treatment we involve is de-stressing. Mm, you know, nowadays, like we kind of lost the idea of uh, living without stress. So stress, mm. stress is needed, right? Yes, you know, part of it, stress helps us to get active, more alert you know, keep the focus, all those things. But sometimes it reaches more than what we can, what we can use it in a healthy way. And then when we are in fully stressed, we don't know how to get out of it. So we do a lot of de-stressing protocols, including yoga, meditation, breath work, all these beautiful Ayurvedic treatments with the warm oil, abhyanga, shirodhara, various different things, you know, finding a way where the person's, you know, the soft, Spot is, spot is touched and they can relax into it. So that's one bringing the relaxation. And then we need to reverse whatever the damage that body experienced through whatever the cause, whether it's overeating or eating wrong food, um, wrong lifestyle, um, leading into inflammation and hormonal imbalance, which we achieve through um, different kinds of medications. Um, food is a medicine, so we will prepare a particular kind of food that is needed for the individual. And also all this deep purification process that we do. Um, one of the important process in weight loss is if it is particularly a kapha constitution and uh, there's a lot of kapha, active kapha involved, then we do vamana, if not both for the vata and pitta imbalance and vata and pitta constitution uh, with the weight gain, we, we definitely take them through the process as long as their physical body and mental body is strong to do virechana and vamana after doing this neha karma intake of the recommended um, fat, either sesame oil, flax oil, or ghee or coconut oil, depending on what best work for them. And then the purification. Uh, once that's done, you know, the doshas kind of, you know, integrate themselves and it calms down um, and the body start to function um, normally. And then to remove the excessive fat, which is already accumulated, we do a process in Ayurveda we called uh, Medhahara Chikitsa. That means something which reduces the adipose tissue or breaks down the adipose tissue or another uh, technique we call le- Lekana Chikitsa. That means which is to do the scraping action um, that would work on different uh, channels, arteries, um, you know, what we call these uh, fat molecules, which are very stubborn and adherent to each other, we loosen up them and start it to melt and the body releases energy by using it and um, giving the diet, which support this um, speeding up of the metabolic process and help to release the burning of the fat and releasing the energy. So these are the protocols that we involve so that the body can come back to its normalcy, remove the armor, uh, start the breaking down of the fat, relax the mind, reduce the inflammation, and automatically that will help to correct the hormonal imbalance if they have. And if there is a strong hormonal imbalance, we use very specific Ayurvedic medicine to help that as well. Fabulous. Wonderful. It really is a complete holistic program. Taking a moment out here, because you just heard Dr. Sujata talking about the importance of our daily routines and lifestyle in order to keep our doshas in balance and prevent disease. If you're interested in building this Ayurvedic foundation of daily self-care practices, well, I have something that could support you, and that is my 28-day online self-paced daily habits for holistic health program. The objective of this 28-day program is to educate and support you through the process of implementing daily routines and habits to help you achieve holistic health by balancing the doshas, preventing illness, and supporting all the systems of your body so that you can thrive. In this program, I cover how to structure your day to flow with the daily energy cycles, the circadian rhythms, rather than going against them and suffering. I cover the mental gunas or qualities and how to maintain positive mental health. I talk about the foundations of Ayurvedic healing. And this is the 
principle of healing in Ayurveda. Like increases like, opposites pacify. I'll help you to understand this principle of healing so that you can go forward and be your own healer and understand how to navigate the seasons to maintain balance, to prevent illness and have the confidence and feel empowered to manage your own health. I'll also talk about connecting to your true nature and to your intuition to help guide you in living a positive and fulfilling life. If you'd like more details on this, check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com and click on the programs tab and you'll find all the information there. Again, this program is self-paced. You can start at any time and you can take your time going through it also. And also you talked about, you know, determining, first of all, the causative factors, really getting to know the person and really with weight loss too, there can be a big emotional component to it also. Right, Dr. Sajata? Very so, much so. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know, figuring out the cause of it, you know, a lot of people have emotional eating, right? Um, few people shut down eating. Um, they, they don't want to eat when they're emotional or stressed, but most of us, um, nowadays, particularly, um, when we are stressed, we eat emotionally. I think it's also because we, as the modern lifestyle expands and we are becoming very individualized, you know, individualized what I want, what Mm -hmm. makes me happy. These are the questions we ponder around. Mm -hmm. Um, And that creates isolation, right? So we are looking to what I want, like the, um, the living in a community, all those things are getting less and less. And that's what played a big role. And it shows what when pandemic hit, the isolation, the restriction, we are left yeah. alone. Who yeah. do we connect? Who do we associate ourselves? Who do we relate? Where is the exchange happening? Mm. And one way for temporary gratification and content is through food. Um, you know, food gives a simple of fulfillment. You know, it fools you and then you feel a sense of fulfillment. And, um, you know, that we try once and uh, we feel bad again and this cycle of, okay, then we get frustrated, then, you know, we need the pleasure and that content. So we kind of eat food. And that's what purely showed during this pandemic, people ended up eating way more than what they need or they would not eat when they had other fulfilling things in their life. Friends, the contact or meeting out, sports, exercise, because this is also needed to fulfill your senses. But when mm-hmm. that deprivation happened because of isolation and restriction, the easy way to access was food because pandemic also made, we deliver the food. A lot of businesses started to deliver the food to your doorstep. So these, any kind of worry, fear, boredom, everything, they were able to suppress it through food. Yeah. And, and then in the, on the top of it, inactivity. Yes, exactly. Lack of of activity due to just being confined at home. And I think it's really interesting as well that, you know, that tends to be more of a craving towards the sweet taste, right? Which is yeah. considered more nurturing. It's made up of the earth and water elements, which of course, the same as kapha. So it's going to increase kapha, then lead to more tissues. And it's, we're, we're seeking that nurturing through food, through the sweet taste. Mm-hmm. And I want to share something here, Colette. You asked me if I have any cases that to share. You know, oh, I've seen that people who who have emotional indigestion, I call. Mm. That means a lot of things happens in their life. They don't know how to express. They don't speak how they feel. They never had an opportunity in their life that somebody's there to hear them or uh, feel for them or their feelings matter to another person. So if you've grown up like this and um, then you kind of keep everything to in yourself and you need to have a really bigger body to as you as as you experience life, there's more and more of this experience and things comes up and you need to contain it. You've got to create more space inside. Yeah. More physical tissue. Uh, and that that leads to weight gain because you need to contain in your hold. Mm-hmm. So that's another way the storage of emotion equals to storage, more storage space and wow. more accumulation of weight. Working with people, teaching them, 
that their feelings matters and they they need to give importance to that before they look for somebody else to value them and give importance and teaching them how to process their feelings not to numb it not to numb mm-hmm. it through food not to numb it by you know over sleeping and all those things so once you kind of get a, a flow for these things your body doesn't need to have extra girth to carry this emotional so emotional weight too yeah so the body is literally creating more tissues in order to store the undigested emotions absolutely I've always been inspired since I mentored with you back in 2014 about the way you handle the emotional aspect of healing and and get how you give it such priority. And I think that's so important. Yes, very much so. You can access the body through the mind or you can access the mind through the body. Then that's where the concept of the sattvic food comes. You eat sattvic food, your mind becomes sattvic mm-hmm. and you can do the other way around. Right, exactly, exactly. So for people listening out there who are really struggling with weight, what would be your advice in regards to first steps, Dr. Sushata? The first step would be, you know, be easy on yourself. Be yeah. be kind to yourself to start with, you know, don't get too frustrated rejecting your body. But because I say, once you start hating your body of rejecting it and feeling really um how to say uh against your body if you have thoughts and feelings like that i say that what you can't accept you can't change you got to own it to yeah. make the changes yeah so wherever that body is or however you're feeling the first step would be going to say hey you know i'm here now like this i accept you i'm not going to feel disgusted about you or criticize you in my head and i feel uncomfortable to look at myself in front of the mirror so you just want to be embracing okay this is where i am now but i own you and i will i will i will work towards changing you making you comfortable making mm. you healthy right mm. so that should be the first step and then try to declutter your house and throw off all these food ingredients and things that you know that doesn't help you anymore and don't shop them again just you know don't fill up your fridge with these things and um, you know do a, a new shopping list that you want to consume throw away or give away the things which are not support you of you to the your new um new individual that you want to become and if if any kind of uh, stress factors that leading you to go into this vicious cycle of you're stressed and then you're going to eat to make yourself feel good and comfortable you want to deal with it and find another way to release the stress and another way to reward after a long day of work um change your thought about um what's pleasurable try to find a pleasure through the food which are healthy and you can make them tasty and you know it's a matter of adjusting for a few days and you will start liking those things the new things you introduce um and spend time with the people who are similar minded who is working on themselves to change um and you know because if you want to change something you need to start i tell to this to people if you want if you if you say okay i need to change my weight you got to change everything that you've been doing previously if you've been waking up on the right side of the bed for really for the fun sake and to change it wake up on the left left side of your bed and do everything something different and new but which is beneficial so changes need to happen right from the beginning when you get up from your bed and that will lead into all other positive changes and um, then you can make an effort so if you can't do it by yourself consult somebody who's locally available who understands you who works out with you step by step process what possible and if you can travel to bali we are here uh, we have helped several people and also we can we can start working online if you're not able to travel um you can start with a consultation then we can create a a a guided diet and lifestyle and uh, recognize the causes that you have whether it's emotional um or stress related then we can work work with you 
Wonderful. Great advice. And I think starting with acceptance is huge because the, the more you're not accepting the situation, the more stress is in the body, right? Leading to cortisol, leading to inflammation and so on. So acceptance is a big part of the journey. And I love that you said, you know, purge your home, because I think starting with something like that shifts the energy around you, right? Very much so. And you mentioned there that you do online consultations, and I'd love for you to tell people a little bit more about Amir to City. Yeah, we have a Ayurvedic uh, health center. We offer uh, Panchakarma programs, simple detoxes, uh, rejuvenation programs. Uh, we work with people from simple allergy to people who have cancer or come after post-cancer treatments and stuff. Um, people can come and stay um, with us in if you're working on some health issues, you need to stay with us for a more than a um, 10 days at least. Um, or you can just come and experience what I read. If you're very new, have no understanding. Um, it's in a, a village called New Kuning in Ubud. Um, we have created a, a beautiful space for people to heal, but in a very safe, protected, caring environment. Um, people can come at any time. So it's not a group retreat. Everybody's in their own journey. Um, we tailor made programs to suit their needs and health issues. We provide educations while you're there through Ayurvedic workshops, question and answer session, cooking classes, um, also yoga and meditation. And, um, doctors are there to take you through the different stages of your program and uh, support you so the whole team we've been operating since um, 2007 um yeah so we are there if anybody needs help and want to understand the holistic approach to understand yourself and empower yourself take help in your hand um, yes. and then take help when you need and it, you, they can find all the information on amir city.com correct Mm -hmm. And so that's spelled A-M-R-T-A-S-I-D-D-H-I. -D -D -I. I'll put that in the show notes also. Can you explain about this, the name Amir to City? Because it's a beautiful meaning as well, please, Dr. Sajata. Thank you. You're very polite. And uh, usually it's a hard word for people to uh, pronounce. Um, Amrita Siddhi, it's not, not an easy way. Your tongue needs to twist, um, but you're very good at it, Colette. Um, um, Amrita Siddhi means mastering nectar of life. Um, Amrita is, um, which keeps you, uh, alive and uh, mastering of, uh, life essence and uh, immortality. That's what it means. So, um, we chose the name, uh, with the understanding that, um, it's, it's the process of, um, bringing this Amrita back into life, which, revives uh, life back into when it is um, uh, threatened um, and uh, learning the method and simple awareness and tricks to keep this Amrita alive in the body so that the body can heal, repair and rejuvenate when you give a ideal circumstance and nourishment. So that's what Amrita Siddhi means. So mastering this nectar of life. I love that. Such a great, great name. Dr. Sajata, is there anything else that you want to add before we finish up today? I think, you know, losing weight, you know, it, it's needed, but it, it's, it's not always. So sometimes uh, feeling healthy is not just about losing weight. Um, the other factors plays a role. So, uh, not just focused on losing weight and, you know, working too hard and starving yourself and putting yourself on a hard diet and stuff, but find a way to eating healthy, living healthily, uh, having a great relationship with the food as a lifestyle rather than just a, a fix to a problem. This is what I would like to say. If you want to lose weight, see it in a way to make it this as a part of life rather than just a, a quick, intense workout. And that's when, you know, you have the yo-yo effect on lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, and then frustration. So true. And the Ayurvedic way of living, the guidelines help you to make lifestyle shifts. So it will last for a lifetime. 
Dr. Sajata, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you for coming on today and sharing this amazing information, so much insights, and I think will really help people. And I appreciate you and the pivotal role you shared in my journey, and I hope we get to connect in person soon. Yeah, very much so. I look forward to see you back again in Bali. (laughs) Great. Dr. Sajata, thank you so much. Take good care of yourself, and until next time, be well. Yeah, thanks, Colette. You too. Bye-bye. Bye for now. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Dr. Sujata and please check out the show notes for all the links mentioned in this episode. If you think this episode will be helpful to family or friends, please share it with them so we can spread this Ayurvedic wisdom. And if you haven't already downloaded or followed the podcast, please do so. And if you would like to rate and review the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, I would really appreciate that. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Instagram under Elements Healing and Wellbeing. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And until next time, take good care of yourself. Be well. And bye for now. It's long before.